Hey guys, welcome back to another video and today we're going to be solving the lead code question binary tree level order uh, traversal 2. Okay, so and this is also the second problem of the July challenge and finally first I'm going to be going over the theory of solving this, pro uh, this problem and then I'm going to go uh, implement it with Python code. Okay, so given a binary tree, return the bottom up level order traversal of its nodes values i.e. from uh, left to right, level by level, from leaf to root. Let's say we're given this binary tree. And normally when we're performing a binary tree level order traversal, we're going to be moving from the left to right, starting from the top. So in this, if we were doing it normally, we would first do 3, then we get 9, then 20, then 15, and 17. But for this question, we need to do it in reverse. So what we're going to do is, First, we're going to have 15 and 17, then we're going to have 9 and 20, and then we're going to have 3. So this is how our final result is going to look like. Okay, so as you can see, we're going to have a list of lists starting from the bottom, and we're going to be moving left to right. So 15, 17, then 9, 20, and then 3. So how are we actually going to go ahead and solve this? So the best way I think is to implement a queue. So let's do that right now. Okay, so now I'm going to implement the queue and let's see how it's going to look like. Okay, so first we're going to take these uh, following parameters. So we're going to have a queue. Then we're also going to be looking at the size of the queue. So I'll just call it S of Q. So this is going to be the size of this, so the size of the queue. Next, we need, we're going to have some sort of temporary variable. So I'll just call it temp, a temporary list. And then our main and final thing is going to be our results. So this is going to be our final answer. So let's look at how we're going to go about for solving this question. So our first step is going to start off with the queue. Now our queue is going to start off with the root. So in this case, the root is 3. So our queue is going to contain 3. Now what is the size of our queue? Our queue has this length of 1. So we're going to write 1. So what's the temp? We're not going to, this is going to be an empty list for now. And so is the result. The result is also going to be an empty list. Now we need to perform the pop function a total of 1 time because the size of the queue is 1. So now we're going to pop off this 3 and we're going to dequeue it. Now this after we pop it off, we're going to add this to our temporary list. Now what we're going to do is, everything which is inside of our temporary list, we're going to look for its children nodes. So what are the children nodes of 3? So first we have 9 and then we have 20. Now we're going to add those nodes to our queue. So now our queue is going to consist of 9 and 20. Again, notice how we're going from left to right. Now the size of our queue is changes from 1 to 2. We're going to make that 2. Now our result is still going to be empty for now. Now the next step, what we're going to do is we're going to add our temporary list to the result. So in this case, we're going to add 3, the list of 3, to our results. This is going to be a result. And our temporary list is going to get replaced with whatever is in the queue. So first we're going to DQ 9. So when we DQ, we're going to add 9 to the temporary list. Then we're going to DQ 20. Now we're going to add 20 to the temporary list. Now what we're going to do is the same way how we uh, looked at the nodes, the children nodes for 3, we're going to look at the children nodes for each of the elements in this temporary list. So first let's look at 9. So 9 does not have any children nodes. So we're just going to leave it empty. Nothing's going to, we're not going to queue up anything. Now we're going to look at 20. So 20 does have children nodes of 15 and 17. So we're going to add that to the queue again. So now we're going to add 15 and 17. Now the size of the queue changes again and it's going to become a uh, 2. Uh, sorry, it stays the same. It's going to be 2. Now we're going to uh, repeat the steps again. So to our results, we're going to add 9 comma 20. But what we need to see is that we're not going to be appending this on. So when we append it, it's going to be after 3. But instead, 
it has to be before 3. So what we're going to do is we're going to insert this at the 0th position. So we're going to be inserting this to the beginning. So this is how our result is going to look like. So first we're going to have 9 comma 20 and then we're going to have 3. So that's going to be your result for now. Now our temporary list is going to empty out and 15 comma 17 comes to our temporary list. So we're going to make that 15 comma 17. Now uh, after dequeuing them, our queue becomes empty because 15 does not have any children nodes and neither does 17. So right now our queue is empty and the size of our queue becomes zero. And the last and final step before we can uh, exit out of our command, uh, our program is going to be to add this temporary list to our result. Now again, we're gonna we're not gonna append it, but we're gonna insert it at the zeroth position. So that's the final result is gonna look like this. So we're gonna insert this to the zeroth position, and then we're just gonna write everything else. So nine comma twenty and then three. And as you see, we got the final result. Now let's try to implement this into our code and see how that look like, looks like. We're now gonna look at the code part of this problem. So first we're gonna check if the root is empty. And if the root is empty, we're just gonna return an empty list. After checking this, we're gonna create a new variable called Q. So we're only gonna get here if the root is not empty. And since it's not empty, our first element of the queue is going to be the root because we're going to be starting from the top. And then we're also going to create an empty results list and this is uh, going to be our final result. Now we're going to put this all inside of a while loop while the length of the queue is not equal to zero because we know that as soon as the queue, the length of the queue becomes zero, that means that we've reached the bottom of the tree and then we can stop doing uh, iterating through our while loop. Now, for each iteration, we're going to start off with a layer, which is an empty list. So uh, then we're going to go inside of a while loop. So uh, sorry, for loop. So for i in the range uh, 0 uh, all the way up to the length of the queue. So for our first iteration, we're going to uh, go from 0 to 1. So we're just going to iterate through the for loop one time. Now we're going to set a temporary variable which is going to start off, which is going to be the, uh, the first element of the queue popped off. So for our first iteration, this is going to be 3, since we're going to pop off the first ele uh, zeroth element of our queue. Then we're going to add the value of that, so the value of the zeroth element of the queue, to the layer. So, uh, and then after we do that, we're going to check if that element has a left and a right child, a child node. And if it does, we're going to add that to our queue. So that way we're going to go keep going through our while loop. Then later we're going to go uh, and insert this layer to our results. So we're going to be inserting and not appending because we want to uh, first, because we want the order to be backwards from, from bottom to up. So in the beginning, we're first going to put three we're first going to have three in our results. Then later, we're going to, if we appended the next thing, so if we appended 9 comma 20, then it would be three and then 9 comma 20. But instead, we want three to be in the ending. So what we're going to do is, we're going to insert 9 comma 20 to the beginning of our list at the zero with index. So we're going to do that throughout. And it's going to all, until we reach all the way to the bottom. And then after that, our queue is going to have a length of zero. We're going to exit out of our while loop and then we're just going to uh, return our results list. Okay, so I submitted this and my submission got accepted. And finally, do let me know if you have a better, more optimized solution to this. And don't forget to like and subscribe if you enjoyed the video. Thank you.